Serious. Former gang members, what incident happened that made you realize you didn't want to be in a gang anymore? Brazilian here. I was a teenager in the mid-2000s. Used to hang with a lot of other kids who were also low middle class and had a lot of time and liberty to be on the streets causing havoc. A lot of them were hooligans. In Brazil, hooligans are really common in major cities with big football teams, but it's somewhat different from those in Europe. People hang in the torcidas organizadas, wear uniforms, sometimes carry guns, and fight over petty shit with people from other torcidas. The main goal is to beat and steal the other crew's materials like shirts, hats, flags, and this kind of shit. It's not uncommon to see people die over this ridiculous nonsense. Anyway, it was a large gang, but no one did heavy stuff like killing people, even though sometimes someone was packing a revolver or a pistol. At least I've never heard of something like that. We used to beat the crap out of other people from other hoods though. Some of us were really violent. A lot of my friends trained martial arts just for the sake of kicking people's ass on the street. I stopped hanging around because some of my friends got arrested for attempted murder and they just didn't give a single fuck even after jail. Some of them also sold weed and I began to wake up to the fact that shit was getting more serious. I had a lot of doubts before after seeing people get wrecked over nothing. Like random street fights were common. I saw a couple of random dudes getting their heads stepped on, noses exploded, teeth broken, people threatening others with firearms. I chose to focus on school, and years later I'm a lawyer with no criminal background, thankfully. My friends from that time are doing okay, I guess. They are alive, and I think that's a good thing, considering what they used to do and how many enemies they made. I was a prospect in a motorcycle gang. Back in the days, I somehow romanticized Sons of Anarchy and found myself as a hangaround at the local chapter of a well-known club. I was pretty passive, helped where I could, and just tried to blend in as best I could. After a few weeks, I was seeing them as friends. They seemed like regular guys. Most of them had pretty decent jobs and were well educated, even though the parties tended to be rough. Many people were beat up for fun and things like that. A few months later, I was proposed to be a prospect, got the leather, and was the happiest guy. Things turned fast. Being more inside the club meant to know more. The guys you linked to hang around with were dealing with small firearms. Nearly everyone was secretly on drugs, even though the club rules meant that you can get drunk but not high. I stood with them because I still called them my buddies until I was asked to steal electronics from a parked truck. Didn't want to end up in jail like my cousin who got three years for stealing a simple radio. I denied and without a warning I got the beating of my life. They took away my jacket and said to repeat the beating if I'm ever coming back again. Not really a gang, just a crew. Seven poor misguided youth selling drugs and robbing dealers for food and fun money. We got drunk and coked up every weekend and went partying. Then, by the end of the night, we were doing stupid shit like vandalism and end up in someone's house, kicking the shit out of them and jacking their stuff, usually drugs and other sellables. People started getting too heavy into the coke, some got into meth. Others just wanted to try and be rappers and music producers. At that time, my mom was diagnosed with cancer and I needed an income to pay some bills. I had to grow up quick. Selling drugs and robbing dealers wasn't cutting it and I ain't cut out for that life either. I slowly started losing contact, hanging around less, quick coke and heavy drinking, started roofing and I was out after I didn't talk to any of them for a bit. The one, my best friend who I grew up with, didn't take it too well and thought I was just a bitch and whatnot. I'm a bitch, so be it. I've been in some fucked up situations, but none of these deterred me. I was young and angry, and each time someone would make a move against me, my first thought wasn't, I need to stop. It was, it's time to get this person back and make them hurt worse than they hurt me. I was this way until around 21, but then I met my now wife and saw there was more to life than just walking around with a chip on my shoulder. Now I work in fashion for a mid-level label in New York City and can actually enjoy life. I keep in contact with my homies and I love them, but you can see who stayed in that life a little too long. Some are dead and not even from violence, from depression. They aged out of that life and found that they had no options, couldn't find a job because of their criminal record, didn't finish school or obtain a GED so they couldn't even join the military. I watched them go 
from angry to frustrated to basically pleading for opportunities, then bam, gone. And these were the older guys everyone thought was cool when we were younger, but eventually we realized that wasn't the case. For the others that finished school, they're doing okay. Most work blue collar or manufacturing jobs. They're happy for the most part, or maybe just satisfied with complacency. I was never initiated, but in sixth grade I moved to town with a heavy gang presence and everybody had some form of affiliation with a local gang. The middle school I went to was a crip school. How silly is that? And I wanted so hard to fit in and be accepted, so I started hanging out with questionable kids. My locker mate convinced me to start selling weed out of our locker and the whole thing felt so wrong. After doing it for a few months, he wanted me to officially be jumped in and being someone who grew up in a house of women, single mother, two older sisters, I've never been in a fight in my life and I was terrified at the idea of eight people jumping on me. So I told my mom and she immediately pulled me out of school and we moved a few weeks later. I found out a year or so later, the kid who I was selling weed for was shot and killed in a robbery gone wrong at 14 years old. Every once in a while, I look back at that time and think about how radically different my life would be if I had stuck with it. I got roped into a skinhead gang in the late 90s because I grew up in a place where white people were a significant minority. We only made up about 15% of the population, so it was a join or die situation because white loners were seen as targets for Hispanic gangs. I got roped in by the rhetoric about white people sticking together and how everything was a threat to white people, etc. I left when I realized that we were doing the same shit as all the other gangs, selling drugs to our own people defending our territory while vandalizing it and treating it like shit, all while preaching about he we were defending the white race. I realized it was all bullshit from top to bottom. The racism stuck with me for a few years afterward. That didn't go away until I joined the military and saw that dividing along racial lines was absolute horseshit and that the real threat were the rich men in suits trying to bleed us all dry. My dad was a drug dealer and my mom was one of those women who wanted to court a drug dealer, and then she got pregnant with me. Long story short, it wasn't a loving childhood with plenty of opportunity and support. In Britain, it really does depend on what part of the country you are in for how the gang culture works. I lived in Northwest Kent at the time, which was practically London, but just not as built up. I joined a multi-racial gang while I was still in school, which meant I spent most of my time drinking alcohol, smoking weed, and carrying a knife. Our gang had a particular focus on violence and antisocial behavior, with the usual turf wars descending into beat em ups. We used to hang out on the tallest hill in our area and an abandoned set of flats right next to it. Our famous moments were two particular incidents. One was the arson attack on the abandoned flats, which burnt the place to a fine crisp. Rumor was it was one of our own who, seeing the gang was falling apart, decided to torch the place. And the other, was when they sent the riot police to deal with us. The riot police incident was the beginning of the end. What had happened was every single one of us turned up on the hill for a party, about 100 or so of us, so we were all drinking, and then all of a sudden, four police vans turned up at the bottom of the hill and started marching up with shields raised. I grabbed a drunk buddy and left with everyone who actually had a future ahead of them, but the police were combing the streets for everyone. Me and my drunk buddy hid in someone's front garden for most of it. I heard that in the end, one of the up-and-coming members of the gang decided to lead half of us into town under the premise, they can arrest us, we haven't done anything wrong. You can probably guess how that ended, but yeah, they all got broke up and packed into those police vans for public disturbance offenses. Later on, the gang got so large that we were pretty much pariahs in the community, not to mention the target for every single gang next to us. Q, lots of fighting, and a bit of non-lethal stabbing in the butt, basically, or with short-bladed knives. None of us were stupid enough, like today's kids, to go down for murder by machete, and that's not even mentioning the real killer, inter-gang rivalry. Large gangs normally aren't smart enough to be so organizational that they stay centralized, and we were no different. So we had 10 people all claiming they were the head of the gang, and you didn't have a choice on what side you were on, you were just automatically affiliated. It all came to a head when one leader brought in a bunch of people from London and another member who said he was a leader 
and brought up a bunch of people from a more violent gang who we were on and off with to back him up. We were pretty much on the edge of all splitting up and becoming a bunch of all new gangs, but then the arson attack happened on the abandoned flats and that's when the police had had enough and stationed police on our turf. In the end, the new small gang I was in was under attack on the daily and I'd never been beaten up so many times in my life, which was deserved. It's not like I would have done any different in their shoes. In the end, we laid low, drew a huge fucking big line between us and our cousin gangs, which appeased our old homies, which meant we could actually walk on the streets we lived on and then moved on with our lives. I returned to Scotland for a long while, got married and educated, came back and thankfully, no fucker recognizes me. I was a drug mule for a small gang out in Southern California when I was a kid, 13 years old when I started. It was all good for a few weeks. Pick up a backpack, walk it down to the next city, meet someone at their house acting like a kid, going to see a friend, and make a hundo each time. Then one day, I was met by two guys on my way to a drop. I didn't know them, but figured something came up and they were told to meet me halfway. My stomach curdled because I knew something felt off, but I followed them anyway, got into a car, and drove down to some house near the beach where the guy I was supposed to meet was sitting out front. We go inside, everything seems normal. They ask for the bag I hand it to them. They grab it, look inside, and then start beating the shit out of the guy I was originally supposed to meet. I about shit myself and wanted to run, but I was too afraid to even move. Ended up being shoved out of the house into a car and dropped off in a town not too far from where we were with. No idea what just happened. Turns out I was incredibly lucky because it was another gang who had caught on and took the goods and spared me any real trouble. After that, I stopped showing up to help those guys. I don't want to be beaten to death over this shit. I feel I was lucky enough to get out of there completely unharmed. One day, as we had a hundred times before, we walked into a grocery store. We each grabbed a 30 pack of beer or a couple bottles of liquor and we walked right out the front door without paying, basically daring someone to try and stop us. But this time, there was a new girl working. She ran over and shouted stop and grabbed my friend by the arm. We all froze. My friend slowly turned his head to look at her, hand as if it was a fly that had landed on him. Without moving a muscle, he looked her in the eye and in a cold voice I never heard him use before, he said, Bitch, you had better fucking let go of me. Suddenly, she seemed to realize the reality of the situation. She threw her hands up and jumped back a step, her face a mask of fear. The terror I saw in her eyes, the loss of innocence that accompanies the realization that there are bad people who will hurt you for doing the right thing, it broke something inside me. Immediately, I was crushed with guilt and sadness over making someone feel that kind of fear and I knew that I did not want to be that person. We walked off, all bravado and laughter and back slapping, but my hands wouldn't stop shaking and I made an excuse to go home. That was the beginning of the end of my shitty street punk days. I ended up getting a job which I threw myself into and I saw my friends less and less. One day I realized I hadn't talked to any of them in months. These days, I'm a pretty boring guy, approaching 40, full-time job, wife and a kid, the usual. My old friends, one of them is dead or deed, one is homeless and lives in a park, one is struggling with addiction and trying to be a father, and the rest I couldn't locate or find anything about. I feel lucky to have gotten out when I did. I wasn't in gang, but started selling weed in high school, coke at 17. After a few years, I became a large cocaine dealer. I started using coke young and quit when I was 20. I found a better high, heroin. Heroin took over and I sold drugs to keep living my life. I had condos, cars, motorcycles, girls, but slowly heroin took over, needed more every day and focused less on selling coke, made less and less money, lots of friends and connections. Then one morning at 5 a.m. my door gets broken down. I knew I was a target for cops and robbers, so I always barricaded my door. It took them longer than normal to get in, so I had time to flush $20,000 worth of coke. Cops shot and killed my dog, who wasn't even attacking, didn't find drugs or weapons because I kept at other location. All in all, I got lucky, except it was withdrawal time. I had suffered from withdrawal here and there, tried to quit a few times, locked in a cell for three days sick is horrible. I was in a dirty jail for two weeks until I finally got bail, 
I went straight to a dealer and got heroin when I got out. Found out cops stole all my cash. I had to sell condo to pay for lawyers, which got all the charges dropped. I spent the rest of the savings lounging around for months. When I realized it was either start again selling drugs or try a job. A good friend of mine was a tower crane operator and for me, in with a company who got me in a union. I ended up loving the job. I was making decent money, but not near what coke brought, so that took time to get used to and budget. Almost all friends from dealing days disappeared, except for two key friends. I finally quit heroin after years of struggling. Now I am a foreman, making 120000 a year and loving it. It was a struggle, but it was so worth it to live without worrying if going to jail or not getting H and being sick. Anyone in struggle, just stay with it and fight the good fight. So worth it in the end. I still look back at the fun I had, but also the shady shit I made myself do to rise in that world, and that keeps me level.